Hey guys, I'm EG Magnum, and this is my Inferno Glow Scion build. I will be putting timestamps in the description so you can skip around wherever you want. Um, but I wanted to talk real quick about the jewel check here in the name. I'm going to be respecting the tree to have all the jewel sockets. That way I can check timeless jewels in any of the sockets on the tree. Um, with that though, I am going to be doing a forum post and a video uh, with more details on this, probably at the beginning of next week because the race is coming up. I kind of want to try to attempt to get into racing again. So we'll see what happens this weekend. But anyway, um, with this though, hopefully we can either have a way to identify jewels on stream at least, uh, so you know what you got, and uh, maybe even middleman some trades so there's a safer trade environment for trading these jewels. Um, the other thing too, I'll be finally getting my Discord set up so that that could also create a trade environment for these jewels. I know there's only uh, a little over a month left in the league, but hey, I guess better late than ever. <laughs> but anyway, um, with that said though, I will have a uh, Uber Elder kill at the end of the video, so go ahead and jump in the build. So Infernal Blow is one of my favorite skills in the game, and it has one of my favorite sounds in the game. Here's a few examples. So yeah, that's one of the big reasons that I play it after the change. Before the change, it still had a nice, satisfying pop. Uh, it is a little bit different than what it was, but uh, yeah, it's a really solid skill. Now, speaking of the pop, um, the way it works is you get uh, about 60% of your damage per stack, which stacks up to six times, and it explodes once it's fully stacked. This adds a decent bit of damage. Um, Although, not the easiest to track how much it's doing. Path of Building doesn't even uh, calculate how much the explosion is. So, overall, if you are going to try to figure out what your final damage is, you can take essentially 60% and add that on. A lot of packs, you will not be stacking, or they'll explode beforehand, which the good thing is, they'll be exploding due to having the six stacks, just because anything that's tightly packed together you now hit in an area. So with the melee changes, this definitely feels really good. Prior to this, there were ways to get Infernal Blow to have some decent damage, but the investment was pretty high overall. Uh, probably about the only easy way to get it would be with something like an Onigoroshi, or just using a Brutus Lead Sprinkler as in this build. Now, using a Brutus Lead Sprinkler on a modest budget, you can go ahead and easily get DPS high enough to do anything in the game. Uh, with that said, though, like, say, Uber Elder, the um, attempts that I had at it were okay. <laughs> it took me uh, quite a few attempts to get it done. Uh, after I did down him, though, which is at the end of the video, that I then went ahead and tried to do another Uber Elder kill and did it on the first try. So, as far as overall being able to do everything in the game, yes, this build can do it. Now, as far as farming and doing stuff like monoliths, it is definitely not the best. It is pretty slow. Uh, for monoliths, I would say possibly change in some melee splash for something. Uh, this will definitely help out a bit. But overall, the speed of this build is pretty slow. As far as mapping and stuff goes, all tier 16s are going to be pretty easy. If you ever run into a situation where you think you're going to die, you can pop Vol Molten Shell, and you have about well, full duration, or until it uh, breaks of an extra giant health pool. Even then, having your granite flask up and hitting a molten shell will give you a ton of health. Molten shell is really huge, and it's probably going to be something I use in just about every build. Uh, overall, um, I do use both sets of Ancestral Warchief and Ancestral um, Protector so that I can get both benefits. But overall, pretty smooth. I only use those for bosses. Other than that, I just hit things and listen to the nice explosions as I go. Leap Slam is what I use to get around. It's a pretty okay traveling skill. Uh, feels a whole lot better now that you've got that instant. So you can just instant smack things, instant smack things. Pretty Feels pretty nice. Um, overall, the again, the damage isn't the easiest to figure out how much you have. But it, it is solid enough on, let's just say, a budget of 1 to 4x, not counting my 
crazy chess piece, which is more defensive than anything. Um, but for the most part, offensive items, you just need as much strength as you can get. Cover your resist. And I think uh, the shield, which you can see in some of these clips here, well, most all of them, um, I was using the shield. And it's kind of expensive. Uh, I got the base shield itself for about 60 chaos. Um, it then I got to you know craft uh, some more strength on it, so that's pretty nice. Uh, it also added a lot of health, uh, as you'll see later in the item section. But for the most part, it was really solid and not really that expensive overall. Rings can start to become expensive, so if this is not this league, or if someone comes out with a build that makes strength type gear uh, popular then this build gets expensive pretty quick. Overall, this league, though, really didn't cost too much, and it was pretty easy to get everything I needed. Um, so this league, definitely the budget is very cheap. Overall, though, it was a really fun build, and I am just excited that I got to finally do this build and get it to Uber Elder. Uh, after this, I'm probably going to be doing Ground Slam, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, let's go ahead and hop into the item. Okay, so getting into the item. So, uh, as you can see here, dual wielding Brutus Lid Sprinklers. This is what I did for um, pretty much later on. I think most likely I might just dual wield with this build from now on. You get a lot more damage. Um, and I mean, you kill everything so fast, it's not, not that big of a deal. But I was using the shield for the most part. Um, definitely loses quite a bit of damage. But I go from 7.4k life to 7.9, uh, putting me up to 1.8k strength, which is kind of cool. Uh, the shield actually gives me quite a bit of life, and it gives me some resist, so that was pretty nice. Uh, but for the most part, I think next time if I do this, I'm just going to go straight dual wield with 7.4k life. That's plenty of life with this build. Um, again, I'm still using my same chest piece that I've always been using for pretty much every build now it's going to go in the next one too uh so let's see here for the helmet we've got a life resist and again for defense physical damage from hits taken as fire um astro menace uh, amulet uh, there are a couple of options if you can get a good rare amulet with a ton of strength then you could go with that as well um, if I take it off though, I do lose quite a bit of int and dex, so that gives me an even lower pool of mana to work with. But not the biggest deal, considering this chest piece with the minus mana cost. Um, but overall, you still get enough dex and stuff. Also, you lose a bit of accuracy, it goes down to 99%. So, not the biggest deal, but if you do get rid of Astro Menace, maybe try to find something that has a little bit of dex just to even that out. Uh, from there, I've got the uh, ring here with strength, elemental damage with attack skills, and as much life as possible. Um, really, there's an open suffix here, so if I needed the resist, I could go ahead and put that in. Luckily, I got enough resist on everything else that I could just go ahead and craft some accuracy, capping it out to 100%. Uh, it still didn't feel too bad when it was at 99, 98, or even 96, so it wasn't too big of a deal. Uh, a couple more uniques here. Alberon's Warpath, huge amount of strength comes from that. So I have 20% movement speed. You're going to be leaping around anyway, so no big deal there. Uh, Cyclopean Coil gives us a lot of health and a lot of attributes. Also, because our dex is higher than our int, we get freeze immunity. And because our strength is higher than dex, we also get ignite immunity, which is pretty nice. Uh, you do, however, get shock, so maybe if you run into a map where you need shock immunity, um, get that on a flask somewhere. Uh, moving on to the gloves, you really want as much attack speed uh, and strength as possible. I also got some more accuracy on these just to cap it out again. Um, before, for the most part, I was using a set of gloves that just had strength and I think it was 16% attack speed with a couple of resist and quite a bit of life. Um, since, I mean, you have a ton of life anyway from the strength and you don't need much life to kind of get a good value there. I went with these, they worked. Uh, it gave me that extra bit cap out at 100% for doing the Uber Elder fight. Um, as far as the other ring goes, again, more strength. Uh, this one focused more on the resist. 
A um, little bit of a elemental damage with attacks, and just crafted on some life just to give me a bit more life on that. So, pretty solid ring. And looking at Sinvicta's metal here on the weapon swap, uh, again, you can just swap to it, a couple of things, boom, you've got uh, Rampage, and it kind of helps clear. Not the fastest build, so sometimes it drops off. If you feel like using it or you feel like needing it, it's nice, just that ramp that happens as you play. But not the most necessary, but if you can fit Rampage into something as easy as just hitting one little white pack, I mean, why not? So, looking at Flask here, we got Seething Divine Life Flask of Staunching. Uh, I got a Chemist of Warding, which I changed to a Chemist of Heat, the uh, Silver of Heat. Um, for Uber Elder, uh, for movement and getting around, Adrenaline, Quicksilver Flask. Um, I used an Iron Flask, which I'm kind of starting to like. I got this 100% one, I'm probably going to be passing that around on builds, just because I'm using Vol Molten Shell. Uh, with that up and Vol Molten Shell going, it is a ton of defense, just to kind of show here. The normal one is 4k, um, it's just extra defense with that i think it was getting up to like 15 to 20k somewhere around there and then finally the wise oak uh bismuth flask so it's a bit of damage uh, if you can balance out all your resistances then you can take advantage of the reduction as well uh, but otherwise have fire resist being your highest to get that extra damage okay so for some other options and upgrades really um helmet is one i didn't mention um, you can go ahead and craft on that physical damage from his taking his fire. Uh, it is going to take up the suffixes, so you're going to have to find your resist from somewhere else. That'll be the hard part there. But, uh, can get, um, minus to enemy resistances with the Scorching Fossil. If you decide to use a Dense Fossil, you can also get increased Fortify effect. This will be a defense increase. Uh, but if you plan on multi-modding a helmet, you're going to have to give up that strength, which this is a decent bit of strength. If I take that off, that bumps me down to 1.6 from 1.7. And damage-wise, it's not the biggest loss, but it is, it is an okay amount. So make your decision there. I mean, at this point, we've got really enough damage. Uh, but if you just really want to make something insanely tanky, you can craft that instead. Overall, then you would craft life on it. Uh, just do the 20 and armor, and goes up to 70. That gives you a nice amount of 90 life. Overall, pretty good, pretty solid. So your defense does go up with that fortify effect, though. So other than that, again the amulet get something with uh, strength. Uh, you are going to be leeching, so if you manage to get uh, I think it's an elder amulet with uh, the leech effect, you could also use a. Um, is it a horror essence to craft fortify effect on? That would be a little crazy. Again, you're looking for a ton of strength too, so maybe not that crazy. Just buy one that has a ton of strength. And then if you happen to find one that has a leech effect, then outstanding. Um, and that is maximum recovery per second. I believe is the exact wording. Yes, maximum total recovery per second from life. Uh, but other than that, that's about it. Uh, maybe as far as a curse, uh, you could get a curse on hit some sort, either through a corruption or possibly getting it on a ring. But that's about all the upgrades I could think of right now. Um, but anyway, go ahead and hop into the gym. Okay, I'll just start here and go around. So, Vol Molten Shell, definitely wanted that in this build. Probably going to try to fit Vol Molten Shell into everything. It is an extra button to press, but hey, it's really good. Um, because you can combo your Granite Flask into a Molten Shell, into a Vol Molten Shell, and have a ton of armor. It is insane. Um, well, ton of life pool, essentially. Uh, so, definitely really awesome. Blood Rage. Um, this one I did not quality yet, so oops. go ahead and do that. Uh, other than that, though, I went ahead and threw an Empower in there since I just kind of had one. Um, really can't think of what else I could throw into this build. All the buttons are kind of taken up, so whoops. Um, moving on, though, we have the Ancestral Warchief. Now, 
Uh, for this, uh, I also use the Ancestral Protector, so with multiple totems, you can get out uh, both of them set up, and you get both bonuses. So you attack faster, and you get the more damage from melee damage. Um, this actually gives you quite a bit of damage off of both of those, as you can see there. Uh, then I also have them with combustion. So if they ignite, then the enemy has minus 19 fire resistance. So that gives us even more damage uh, with with those attacking. So pretty pretty solid there for the damage and also just the ability to kind of help clear and also kind of be a distraction for some enemies when you're kind of clearing uh, the monoliths and stuff. Okay, over here, just the typical leap slam, faster attacks, blood magic. Um, if I had an extra link, I probably would throw on culling, but I uh, couldn't really find that. Um, thought about maybe changing that to the combustion or something and switching those around, but overall, I felt like the Ancestral Warchief kind of fit that a little bit more. Uh, they normally get more hits and kind of guarantee that ignite a little bit easier. Uh, moving on to the boots, though, um, I went ahead and threw the flammability in here for the curse. Since I wasn't doing anything on a ring, uh, there's curse on hit with wave of conviction to lower their resistance with the exposure and cast when damage taken. If you're going to get hit, you're an armor based build, you don't have much evasion. So when you get that hit, go ahead and get the minus 25 and the minus 44 from the flammability if you can curse. Um, also getting the curse on hit level up, you get that extra effect of curses, so that's pretty nice. Overall, pretty solid way to get uh, both the exposure and the curse out. Uh, on the auras here, I went with precision, kind of go ahead and cap that off. Uh, anger, and then the war banner. So I'm using that trick again where I can place the war banner and just pick it up just by shift clicking this way I don't interrupt anything that way so um, if you get used to it I used to use shift all the time for leap slam before they made it to where you can just toggle always attack without moving so you can always go your max distance that's been really nice since they added that another thing here from the auras that you're taking up mana with is aspect of the spider is also on this chest it doesn't have to be on the chest um, you can put it on jewelry or wherever you can fit it, but Aspect of the Spider does give a decent bit of damage, and it's kind of like a mini temp change as far as it slowing um, monsters around with action speed. So, pretty nice. Uh, I love trying to fit it in just about any build I can, uh, but can't really uh, reduce the mana cost, so it is 25%. Uh, what you can do, though, if you're not going to use that, you could try to throw in, say, Herald of Ash or something instead. But kind of play around with that, see what you like. But anyway, uh, lastly, though, looking at the main links here. So I went with Infernal Blow, Multi-Strike, uh, Elemental Damage with Attacks, Fortify, Elemental Focus, and Ancestral Call. Um, this has been pretty much my... AoE and clearing. I did use uh, melee splash in there at one point over the elemental damage with attacks. Uh, if you're dual wielding, it seems like you got enough damage to where that feels a little bit better. I don't know if it's necessary though for the clear. Uh, it did give me a little bit more splash for doing monoliths. But overall, for single target, I just would swap in Ruthless over Ancestral Call, and that would give me the uh, single target I needed to really get some damage in there actually here does this I don't think that shows up on tooltip does it um, I guess it does a bit or is that just the uh... oh I haven't even quality this yet so oh that's just the not showing the less damage from ancestral call there we go but anyway overall if you need that extra damage you can throw ruthless in it pretty much skyrockets what your potential damage is so uh, overall, like I said, in maps, I didn't really need it. And even during the Uber Elder fight, I was using Ancestral Call um, through the attempts, and it was pretty much fine. So, kind of feel what feels best for you. And if you're going to dual wield, you definitely have the damage. Uh, no matter even if you're using Melee Splash, it feels pretty good. So, let's go ahead and hop into the tree. Okay, 
So the tree, here we go. Let's start with the ascendancy. So you're the ascendant, so you get to kind of pick and choose. Um, there was a lot of options that I looked at here. I looked at elementalist. Uh, I looked at a little bit of inquisitor at some point, just because of how much crit these weapons actually have. But the last time I did a uh, Bruce Led Sprinkler Scion, I did use Chieftain because it had the strength. Now, with the updated version of what they've done with it, um, it has, I think they added the fire damage and maybe some of the regen. But either way, point being, you can cover enemies in Ash. This is a more damage multiplier. You get 1% of your damage dealt by your totems is leached to you as life. That's always awesome. Uh, you get the regen, you get the fire damage, and of course you get the strength increase, which is huge. Um, you get 40 strength going to it, which is always nice. And then the big decision of did I want this or did I want um, the immune to reflect? Well, I kind of went with the uh, Scion Slayer Leech. Um, it is a little bit less, 2.5 seconds essentially, instead of 5 seconds with the Slayer. But you get Calling Strike, you get damage, um, life leech effects are not removed, of course. Uh, and you can't take Reflected Physical. So, I mean, there's no accidental, I'm going to deal some physical damage and kill myself. Uh, so, overall, I got to start here and kind of disconnect this little section. Not the biggest deal, but hey, it worked. Um, overall, that's pretty much, for the most part, what I chose in the Ascendant tree. If you were doing Elementalist, uh, you could possibly start up here. Connecting this and taking um, the no, inertia is this whatever the uh, one that converts int um, into strength you could take that and probably disconnect right here um, or actually no rather disconnect right here saving quite a few points there um, well that practically puts that in there but overall uh, not. Not the worst choice if you decide to go that route. Probably still will have the damage. Uh, you lose a bit of leech down here. That's going to be about the only big thing. Uh, if you did take that, you could try to respec it around to here. Uh, again, you won't be going up this way, so you can take that out. But also, that was the other reason why I kind of chose Slayer and stayed with it, is I'm also using Pure Talent. This gave me a lot of leech. Uh, if you manage to take these nodes, though, you get enough leech anyway. You don't really need to connect and use pure talent. Um, the main thing with pure talent there is you get plus 25 to all attributes, which is really nice. So I'd still probably try to find a way to throw that in the build. Overall, though, uh, as far as what I chose, it felt really solid, really safe, really tanky. Uh, pretty much you just needed to find ways to mitigate. And I'll kind of go over that here when we jump into the tree. Okay, so looking at the tree here, uh, nice resistances. As you could tell, I kind of needed some resistances. Uh, which also led me to take Soul and Steel, but also Soul and Steel is really nice for some armor and Fizz damage reduction, so I just love this node right here. One of my favorites to take. Um, going over here for this huge amount of strength. Definitely had to reach there, so came in here, got some health. That was nice. Um, Lava Lash is huge for damage when you're doing nothing but fire. Got Rampart for increased Fortify effect. Again, Talking about the mitigation in the build, Adamant definitely helps with that. So when you're popping Molten Shell, you pretty much need to be having that up anytime you see a dangerous situation that needs to go up. Um, Hematophagy gives me a nice bit of increased max total recovery per second. I also just had four points. Uh, if any of these nodes look really good, then you could probably throw something in there. I just really like having as much leech as I can because I am taking advantage of the Scion Slayer leech. Probably the only thing you're going to change in, if you do this build is going to be this right here. Step of the Slaughter, yes it is a Frenzy Charge, so that's a bit more damage and stuff, but it's not that much going with all of these points. Uh, just because this is here, you get a lot of strength while going this direction, and then this was 5% strength, so this was actually a huge amount of both damage and extra life. Um, well, maybe not a huge amount of life, but it was pretty decent for damage, taking all of these and getting there. 
if you can find something better on some other nodes, take those. But overall, um, Adamant turned out to be uh, kind of meh for the uh, bonus that it was given. But it worked out. Uh, the reason why I kept this jewel here, though, is because up here I got life. Over here, this was more tank with the reduced extra damage from crit strikes. And I got Intimidate, 10% chance to Intimidate enemies for 4 seconds on hit, which is pretty nice as well. Uh, other than that, um, looking at the rest of the tree, going up this way, you know, some life and stuff. Uh, resist, life. But the main reason for tracking all the way up here is Elemental Overload. Since I'm not going a crit build, this node is huge for the amount of fire damage I'm going to be dealing. Other than that, I just got this for a bit of life, and I took this to go ahead and use Tempered Mine. So I needed a bit more accuracy to top it off at 100, and well, this, any node that is not um, allocated gives you another 100 accuracy, giving me 600 accuracy and minus 20 intelligence. And since I don't really care about his intelligence too much, and I'm kind of hoping to have less than Dex to have that freeze immunity, this worked out quite nicely. Overall though, that's about the tree that I would use. Um, I mean, with this league, there's a lot of change you could do. So let's see, what do we got? We could go, maybe not over here, but if you want a more block, you could definitely go something over here. Get a bit more block with that shield, if you're gonna use the shield that is. Uh, don't know about any dual building nodes in this area for block. There is this, you get some more attack speed. Um, this one is weapon damage. Eh, probably wouldn't take that. Um, I guess you do get some block chance here. If that was a really good node, like if the 5% strength was there, you could go there. Probably the only major node that I would take though, would be possibly looking at Volpact. Uh, Volpact is pretty solid. You're going to lose a lot of regen, uh, so that is a thing to look for. But you definitely gain more overall life recovery per second while you're leeching with Volpact. So it's kind of use your own um, feel for how you want to play the build. I'm not the biggest fan of Volpact. I know my Slayer was a Volpact build, but. Even though this could really take a huge use of Vault Pact, not my most favorite thing. I did try it a couple of times, and then I did try to use it on the Uber Elder fight. Um, yeah, it's 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 okay. Again, it, it works. I mean, as long as you're doing damage. But as soon as your leech effects fall off, and there's any degen on the ground or anything like that, it gets a little rough really quick. So, again, fill it out for yourself. See which one you like. Uh, but yeah, overall, that's the tree for the most part. Let me go over how I leveled it, and uh, then we'll hop into some path of building. Okay, so as far as leveling, you are going to want to get the Bruce Led Sprinkler as soon as you hit level 28. Uh, but on the way, I went ahead and just used two Screaming Eagles at level 6. Uh, you can either grab whatever you want, or if you have the um, Red Beak Blades, those are okay. Um, but, I mean, whatever you want at level 1, you can get that. You're gonna level with something. Um, I just used the tabula as well and other typical leveling gear. From there I went to the Dread Arc at level 16. This was really nice. Um, you got flammability, it's got a decent bit of fire damage and um, your skills. Started with cleave and then went to infernal blow. Uh, infernal blow was really nice. There's, it's pretty good for clear. I mean I did have the tabula but just on a four link even just looking at that it it is really fast level and i mean you just jump you, when you get leap slam you just jump smack everything explodes uh for leveling you do want to use melee splash and ancestral call um my four link that i was using uh when kind of just practicing just melee uh racing essentially was uh melee splash onslaught and ancestral call and that was pretty solid uh, overall you can level this pretty quickly once you hit Bruce Lead Sprinkler I was in Act 4 I think in an hour with the gear that I had so it was actually I think it was like an hour and eight minutes 
think is what it was. But yeah, overall, pretty quick. So as far as the tree goes, um, just kind of came down this direction, went up, grabbed the strength there because I knew I was anticipating it, and I just went literally down and straight for the strength nose. Uh, other than that, I stretched across here for part of the gladiator. Um, at the time, I didn't worry about this, but I did get the dual wheel nodes first. Um, after that, uh, this all came later for the most part. Um, but I believe, yeah, straight from that, I believe I went straight up for all of this. And when you start hitting Act 5 and you're going to do Katava and stuff, if you don't have your resist up high enough, take Holy Dominion and take Soul of Steel. Uh, from there, I believe I had Diamond Skin early on, so I got my resistances sorted out. Um, and as fast as you can, when you start beelining it up this way, beeline to Elemental Overload. Other than that, take what strength and what life you need. Uh, I'm wanting to say I actually had this entire life wheel at one point. Um, but overall pretty smooth leveling this build i mean you're stacking strength so i was i pretty much had most of my gear ready i had the astra menace i had the warpath and everything so it was pretty easy to throw together i had the shield already ready and waiting and just putting that on as you can see that's a huge amount of life so i believe going into maps i was around five to six k life just out the gate which is pretty insane uh which just allowed me to do uber elder like level 60 to 70 somewhere around there so Overall, pretty safe and solid build. Um, if you have the gear already ready and waiting, this probably would be a pretty safe build for hardcore. I would be interested in trying it myself. Um, I can't guarantee anything, so don't uh, hold me to it being hardcore safe and approved. <laughs> but uh, overall, though, uh, was a very easy leveling experience just going from this to this to that. And again, when I hit um, level 28, I just dual wield these and it was smooth sailing from there. So let's go ahead and hop into a little bit of Path of Building and then I'll show the Uber Elder clip. Okay, so here in Path of Building, we can go ahead and see that the Karubi Jewel, of course, is not here. But um, still showing at 7k life. Got 247k damage right now with Infernal Blow. Um, I believe that is with Ancestral Call. Uh, if you want, go ahead and throw in Ruthless just to kind of see what the more of the damage would be if you went full single target. Um, hitting the 400k, which is what I like to try to hit in Path of Building, uh, at least for a minimum uh, damage. But overall, um, there's a bit of hidden damage from Infernal Blow with the explosion from having six stacks. And in this case, multi-strike seems to not give um, the damage that I was expecting it to. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually adding multi-strike correctly. Uh, could be wrong on that, but definitely feels like multi-strike does a lot more than what Path of Building has given it and as far as just the numbers on it if you do the 50% more and the 99% more I don't know if they're actually calculated in comparison with the 30% less uh, so is that really a 20% more on the second hit and a 69% more essentially on the third hit so that that's something I don't know if uh, Path of Building's um, calculating definitely want to try to figure out that though so uh, other than that like I said seems like it just does more damage uh, overall though is enough damage to do uber elder definitely kind of on the lower side um, but it is doable uh, probably not the build I would recommend to farm that uber elder but it is doable though if you want to take uh, from a blow to that kind of content um, overall here in the items pretty much what I'm showing in this is I've got a starting set of items and a final set of items so kind of showing tabula and uh, Megan Ward's vice gloves so these are kind of some of the items you can check I didn't really go into these because these are kind of more of the base items that you would go with so again a lot of the stuff you want to have in advanced 
and ready for the build already. Um, you know, kind of like a helmet with just some strength and life, and whatever resists. Kind of the same thing with rings. Um, but overall, that's the item section for this. In the three, I went ahead and included some leveling uh, suggestions for skill points. Um, this is definitely different from what I was talking about in the skill tree, but close enough. Um, probably coming over here to this will give you a bit more survivability if you find that you're having survivability issues early. Um, so this is level. Uh, this is set up so that you can just level with this, and then convert it to as much of the final tree as soon as you can. You know when you need it, of course. Um, overall, though. Um, notes didn't really have too much this time to put in you know change disciple the solar to whatever you need for the crew jewel that's the only reason why i really have it is my crew jewel had the strength um you don't really need the crew jewel for this build to work but they are pretty nice they are really nice so if they're in the game in future leagues cool real quick just to show i do have all the um configurations set up as what i would recommend you're pretty much always leeching, got the target ignited pretty much all the time, intimidated and covered in ash. Again, the intimidate is coming from that Karui jewel. That's why I have it checked. 10%, you're hitting enough, you're, you're gonna intimidate whatever. This also would give your totems the same thing. So most everything's intimidated when you're fighting it. Uh, three stages of spider's web, really doesn't take long for that to stack. And I went ahead and turned on wave of conviction, exposure, uh, if you really wanted to kind of turn that off and maybe the um, uh, flammability, but again, you don't really see the damage of Infernal Blow, so having those on kind of gives you more of a example of at least somewhat in some middle ground of what it's doing. Uh, overall, I felt like this build was insanely tanky. Every time I popped uh, Molten Shell, though, it just was pretty much invincible for a uh, couple of seconds, and then Vol Molten Shell was just like 10 seconds of not caring about whatever was attacking me. So, overall, pretty fun build. Uh, but that's the path of building. Pretty simple this time, nothing too fancy. Um, all the skills are just kind of in order. Six Link at the top, 4-4, four, 4-3-3. Four, uh, four, three, three. So, now I like to kind of set them up. But anyway, this has been my build for the... Final Blow Scion. Um, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down in the comments section below. Again, I'll be turning this character into a jewel checker, and hopefully uh, we'll see what happens with that. Um, but, uh, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Have a good one. Here's the Uber Elder clip. Peace. Fuck! Damn! I am so tilted! I will get this done. And not by switching to Cyclone. Okay, that was weird. That was like his balls, dude.
That's not too bad. I actually had some attack speed to back that up. Ah, uh, shit. Okay, we'll go back in AoE. Please tell me that's just two portals. That's just two portals, then I'm doing pretty good right now. Okay, here we go. I believe this is gonna be the one. Come on, explode so I can move. Hey, you, you could you could not that would be awesome uh. I have nothing more to give don't tell me that uh Yeah, I am hitting him from here. Oop. Oop. Oh, he's doing the suck. No! Okay. Oh, here's my chance. Here's my chance, boys. Don't fuck it up. Damn it, dude. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I can do this. He's down to his last bit. I got three portals. Come on. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Last three portals. Do it. You're a bitch, Elder! You're my bitch! Get fucked! Fuck your slam, bitch! You are dead! Boom! Finally done it. Here we go. Woo! Uber Elder, Infernal Blow. One of my second favorite skills that I've been wanting to do Uber Elder with. Finally done. No jewel. So fuck you, Elder. Again. So that was like way too much currency in that, but yeah. Boom! Okay, that was way too much currency. Not the most viable build for Uber Elder, but it tanks the rest of the content like a boss. And that's all that matters.
cool. So, garbage. Okay. Pretty good. Meh. Meh. Not too bad, but finally done. 